Love is a beautiful thing, isn't it? The butterflies in your stomach, the constant thoughts of your special someone, and the feeling of being on cloud nine. But what happens when those feelings become overwhelming and all-consuming? What happens when love morphs into something darker? Something that's taking over your life? That's when we enter the realm of obsessive love. Obsessive love isn't just about passion, it's about possession. It's about losing yourself in the pursuit of someone else to the point where you forget who you are without them. It's a roller coaster of emotions that can leave you feeling exhilarated one moment and utterly lost the next. With that said, here are five stages of obsessive love, according to psychology. Stage one, infatuation. The first stage of healthy love and obsessive love don't differ much. You meet someone who seems perfect in every way and suddenly they're all you can think about. You find yourself thinking about them constantly, replaying conversations in your mind and eagerly awaiting the next time you'll see them. When you're in the honeymoon phase, everything about your crush seems perfect and there's no getting enough of them. You spend every waking moment thinking about them, fantasizing about your future together and feeling like you're walking on air. Stage two. Intensification. This is where healthy and obsessive love begin to differ. For obsessive love, it doesn't matter if your crush reciprocates your feelings or not. You become increasingly attached to them anyway. And you begin to look for any hint that they might feel the same way, all the while ignoring any sign that says otherwise. Also, while idealization typically begins in the first stage, it tends to reach its peak in the second stage. You might start placing this person on a pedestal, viewing them as perfect, thinking they can do no wrong, and believing that they hold the key to your happiness. You're constantly checking your phone for any messages or updates about them. You overanalyze every little interaction you have and start rearranging your schedule just for a chance to catch a glimpse of them. Your friends start to notice the change in you, how you're always talking about this person and how you seem to have lost interest in everything else. Stage three, obsession. When you're obsessively in love with someone, you may feel a constant need to know where they are, who they're with, and what they're doing at all times. You become increasingly paranoid and controlling, questioning their every move and demanding their undivided attention. Because when obsession takes over, rational thinking goes out the window. You start getting mad when they don't respond right away. And you demand to know every detail of their plans. You pick fights because they start liking someone else's posts on social media or can't make time to be with you as much as you want. You might even insist that they cancel plans, jeopardize their work, or stop being friends with someone just to please you because you're already doing the same for them. You stop spending time with friends, your grades or work performance starts to slip, and you're constantly forgetting your responsibilities. Your entire identity becomes wrapped up in this person and you begin to lose sight of who you are outside of the relationship. And as the obsession intensifies, so does the strain on your mental and emotional well-being. You may experience anxiety, depression, and a deep sense of insecurity as you constantly seek validation from your partner. Your friends and family may express concern for your well-being, but you brush off their warnings, convinced that your love is all that matters. Stage four, destruction. And so we reach the fourth stage of obsessive love. It's inevitable demise. Things start falling apart fast. And as the obsession reaches its peak, the very foundation of the relationship begins to crumble. Trust erodes, communication breaks down, and both parties are left feeling suffocated and drained. In some cases, obsession can even escalate into more severe forms of control and manipulation, such as emotional abuse, physical threats, or stalking. For instance, they may follow the target, continuously call, stop by the office unannounced, drive by, or even monitor the target. Of course, not all situations will escalate to this extent, but there are other covert ways you might find yourself exerting control over this person, like cyber stalking, trying to hack their account, or spreading rumors about them. It's also common at this point for the idealization to turn into devaluation. This is where your view of the other person shifts dramatically. 
What once seemed like perfection now feels like a facade and every flaw is magnified. You might find yourself becoming more and more aware of their shortcomings and disappointed by their inability to live up to your unrealistic expectations. It can be so sudden and jarring that it leaves you feeling disillusioned and betrayed, unsure of how to reconcile the stark contrast between the person you thought they were and the person they actually are. And as a result, any connection you once had with this person is replaced by feelings of anger, insecurity, jealousy, resentment, and desperation. Both of you feel trapped in a cycle of toxic, manipulative behaviors, unable to break free from the destructive patterns that have taken hold. But amidst the wreckage lies an opportunity for growth and transformation. Recognizing the destructive patterns at play is the first step towards breaking free from the cycle of obsessive love and rediscovering your sense of self-worth beyond the confines of the relationship. Stage five resolution. Finally comes the moment of truth, acceptance, and letting go. After months of heartache and soul searching, you finally come to terms with the fact that your obsession was holding you back from true happiness. You realize that your obsession was never about the other person, but rather a reflection of your own insecurities and unresolved issues. You acknowledge the toxicity of the obsessive love you once felt and make a conscious choice to move forward with self-love and compassion. You try to find closure however you can and redirect your focus to your own growth and self-improvement. By recognizing the stages of obsessive love, you can begin to take proactive steps to address any unhealthy behaviors and cultivate more fulfilling relationships in your life, starting with yourself. Remember, you are worthy of love that uplifts and empowers you, not love that consumes and controls you. So have you ever found yourself caught in the grip of obsessive love? Share your stories and insights in the comments below. And if this video emotionally resonated with you, let us know with a like and share. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more thought-provoking mental health content, like five signs at silent abuse, not just incompatibility, and Seven signs someone is too into you. Thanks for watching.